All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. Have you been looking for a guide on how to use Orca Slicer? Have you been using uh, the Bamboo Studio app and looking to move over to the Orca Slicer app? Are you getting a new 3D printer and looking for software to use um, with that 3D printer? If any of those things are true, then today's video is perfect for you. Today I'll be going over how I use Orca Slicer with my Bamboo X1C. Now this isn't going to be a definitive guide on every single setting that is in there and what each one of them does, but I am going to go over the things that I use on a regular basis and why I use them and why I think they're important. So if all that sounds good, then sit back and relax. I'll get everything ready. All right, so welcome to the opening screen of Orca Slicer. Um, and again, this is not a, a complete tutorial of everything that is possible with this and an ex explanation of every single thing in here. This is the stuff that I use. These are the tips and tricks that I find helpful when I'm using Orca Slicer. Um, so again, there's a user manual right here. You can read everything. There's several different things. These are all of the things that I use and what I think is important. Uh, from this opening screen here, you do need to sign in. So if you've uh, logged in or ever signed in with your X1C and created an account or your P1P and all of that, signing into that same account here is what will connect the printer to here. So make sure you do that. I'm not going to do that on this video, but make sure you do that as the first step. Um, <clears throat> the second thing that you need to do is um, click on this little drop down here and click on preferences. And what you're going to want to check for is make sure that your language is in the language that you want it to be. Mine happens to be English for North America. It does require you restarting the application if you change this. Uh, one very important one that I always um, recommend here is this zoom to mouse position. And what that means is without that checked, whenever you zoom in and out with the mouse wheel, it zooms in and out on the center of the build plate. By selecting this zoom to mouse position, wherever your mouse is, it zooms into that point on the mouse, which I find to be uh, a lot more handy. The other thing that I change in here is enabling dark mode, and that's a preference. Um, but if you're wondering where that is, that is right there. So those are the things that I do when I first uh, download and install this on a computer, is make sure that the language is changed, zoom to mouse position, enable dark mode. All right, so the next thing, um, you can open a new project, uh, create a new project, open project. I don't ever really use that stuff. I always jump directly to prepare. The first thing that I always do is make sure that my uh, printer is connected and everything and make sure that I sync my AMS. And basically what that does is whatever is loaded into the AMS here, I sync that right away. Um, so let's go over uh, this whole menu right here. Um, so by hitting this gear up here, this will allow you to select all of the different printers that you can use with this, which is super helpful if you have multiple printers. Um, so you can see there's uh, any cubic, uh, all of the bamboo. So you can select all of the bamboo and which nozzles that you want to use here. Um, <clears throat> if you're using a Creality or any of these different printers here, you can um, select that printer and have it, you know, even these uh, chitties or whatever these are, um, rat rigs, everything. You can select which printer that you want to use and do that, and it'll bring in the nozzles that you can use with it and all of that different stuff. So I have the X1 Carbon and all the nozzles um, selected for that, and that's the next thing that you want to uh, change right there. So by selecting this, this uh, tells you which nozzles that you have. Um, you know on on the printer right now and right now I have the X1 carbon 0.4 nozzle 
Okay, the next thing that you want to select is the build plate that you're using. So if you're using the X1C, that comes with the cool plate and the engineering plate on the other side. Right now I'm using the high temp plate and there's also the textured PEI plate. So you want to select whichever plate that you want to use for the application that you're, you're doing right there. Um, the next thing here is all of the filaments. And again, um, right here is the sync button. Hitting the gear here allows you to select all of the different uh, filaments that you can use with that. And I generally just select all of those on there. And then next to each of the filaments is the s settings for each of the filaments. And I have several uh, videos going over some of the fine tuning of that. We won't go over everything in this video, but this is where you get to kind of the filament settings for each filament that's in the slot. And then if you click on this color over here, you can actually change the color of this. If you're using the bamboo stuff, the RFID will change the color and put the correct color in there and everything for you as well. So you don't need to do that. Um, but if you're using one of the generic ones or whatever, you can go in here and this is where you can select them. And you can see that even uh, you can create your own presets for this as I have with uh, different calibrated filaments that I can use in there. And that's where you select that stuff. So that's how you use the filaments. Uh, the next thing that I always look at is um, this is the layer height, I guess, you know, 0.2 millimeters. And generally you want to be, you know, for efficiency and speed and everything. If you want greater detail, you want to do smaller layer heights. But generally you want to half whatever this is for your uh, layer height right there. That's the kind of efficient one. So if you're using the 0.4 nozzle, then you want to use 0.2 uh, layer height. And this is where you can select that. And you can see extra fine, fine, optimal, standard, strength, draft, extra draft. So if you're testing stuff and you want to print a lot faster, you can use a larger um, layer height that won't be um, as good a quality. Um, but it'll print a lot faster. So if you're just testing some stuff out, that's a good one to use. Um, you can also set up your own, which I've done here. And you can um, do that just by hitting the Save button right here. So if you make any changes into any of these things down here, you're going to want to hit the Save button right there and then name it and hit OK to save it. And I do that. Um, we'll go through the things that I change in here and the things that I completely ignore. Um, and then once you have everything the way that you like it, I do recommend that you save it and make sure that you go back to that setup because it'll have the important things that you want in there. Um, so these tabs here start with quality. I really don't do anything in here except the only thing that you might change is if you're doing something where the top surface is kind of rounded or whatever. I do recommend um, doing this ironing and that'll help smooth out the top. Otherwise, it, you can see some lines and stuff, especially when the top surface is rounded. Um, so I will change um, that sometimes, but otherwise I leave most everything in here as is. Uh, same thing with strength. I don't ever really change anything in here. I just let it do its stuff. You can come in here and fine tune all of this stuff. Um, again, that's not what this video is about. This video is about what I use to be successful printing here. And I don't really change anything in here. Same with the speed. Don't really change anything there. Support, I do um, change. So for standard, I don't use any support. Um, but if you do want to use support, this is where uh, I believe it's selected by default here. Um, but I uncheck that and the support that I generally use is uh, Tree Auto. And, may, and then the style is uh, either default or Tree Hybrid. I'll use that. Uh, and then you want to set this threshold angle <clears throat> and what that means is the support will be generated for overhangs whose slope angle is below this threshold. Um, so that means, you know, if it's below 15 degrees, then it's going to uh, automatically do support stuff on there. Um, 
you can change that and do some of that and we'll talk about that in some of the settings up here where you can um, do that type of stuff but in general that's how it's set up and then you can also do manual um, and then go in there and set up the supports wherever you want to set up the supports and you can paint them and I'll show you how to do um, that here in a minute as well. We don't have a model loaded right now, so I can't show you that. So that is one thing that is changed by model as needed, right? If you need supports and everything, this is where you're going to need to decide what to use on there. For the most part, I use the tree, but there is a normal, the manual um, way to do that. And you can block where supports are and do some stuff. And again, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, otherwise, I don't really mess with anything else in here. Um, this is the only part of it that I that I mess with is that right there. The other thing I think by default this comes with brim, and I do no brim on that by default, um, and I don't want to do brim by default. If you're printing smaller pieces. And especially on the PEI textured plate, you probably do want to use a brim. Or if you find that you're failing prints because stuff is sliding around, this is where you want to set up the brim. And basically, um, you know, outer brim, inner brim, auto, wherever you want to put the brim on the inside of stuff, on the outside of stuff, on both, everywhere, whatever. And then you select the width of the brim. How, how thick of the brim that you want to do on there and then once you have everything set up and if that's the way that you're going to print a whole bunch of times then you're going to want to come in here and hit save and save your setup there i don't want to hit save on this one because i uh messed with the support on there um <clears throat> and if you want to revert back to what you were say you came in and set, changed some of your uh your setup here and you want to revert back to it then you can just hit this back button right there and you'll see that it unchecked support and didn't do any of that stuff there okay so that's all of the stuff that I use in this piece um, <clears throat> I make sure that the advanced is checked right there and again make sure that you save stuff on there all right, so let's load a model in here and I'll show you some other stuff that I use. So here's the Benchy that I normally use with everything. And uh, you can change the filament that's being used here. The easiest way to do that is just by hitting the number that corresponds to it. So you'll see it says two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can hit two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And as you can see, it changed the color as I uh, clicked that number. Um, so that's the easy way to do that. Um, some helpful stuff here is you can also go to the model and you can change that as well and do that stuff there. Um, and if you have multiple pieces or whatever, they'll show up as a list of stuff right here. Okay. All right, so let's talk about all of the different options that are up here. And this first one is to find or open or choose or whatever. So this first one is to is like to import um, a file or to go find a file to bring in or whatever. So if you want a quick way to do that, you can do that. I don't really use that button. I do use um, this button to add plates here. So if you have a big project where you need to print multiple things to, and then put them together, it's good to do this. And I think you can have up to four of these build plates here. So you can put um, you know different things in here and mess with the different settings for each one of these plates. So as you're doing a project, you can just then select this plate and go to print or slice and print or go to this plate slice and print on and onward and do that and you can easily just hit the x button and do those do that right there so we'll go back to this plate and then the next button there is to auto orient um, so if you have a weird object that you need to orient you can click that button and it'll audio auto orient it 
Um, you can do, arrange all the objects on there. You can also click this button. I use this button a lot. That's the auto arrange. That's the same one with the range all objects. And I do that. And <clears throat> what you'll see is it kind of puts it in a good place to print whenever you do that. Same thing as if I hit this button up here. It'll arrange and, and go there. I generally just hit that button because it's a lot quicker. I don't do the split to objects uh, thing. I don't do the orbit to parts or any of that. I don't ever use that button. I don't use the variable layer, layer height. I don't use the move button. That's kind of the normal thing. Rotate, you can use this, right, to rotate things around. And sometimes you may need to rotate things to the side there to print it for the, the longest way, right? If you have something that's super long, you'll want to do it that way. But generally, this auto arrange will help you do that as well. But sometimes you do need to rotate it. So that's kind of helpful as well. And I do use that. I, the scale button I use a whole lot as well. And by default is uniform scale. I use that. And what that does is whenever you change one thing, it changes everything, you know, by scale. So you see, see I changed that 50, 50, 50. It changed everything um, uniformly. If you need to stretch and do things like that, then you'll want to uncheck that. And then you can move everything, um, you know, by the X, Y, and Z axis if you need to do that. Okay. The next one is uh, lay on face, and that one I do use a whole bunch. Um, sometimes you'll want to reorient um, an object that's on there. So say, for example, so for this one, right, we can just click on there. So sometimes whenever you download an object, it'll come in like this, and obviously this isn't the best way to print that object. And I want it this face right here to be on the build plate. So the easiest way to do that is click on this lay on face and then click the face that you want it to lay on. And then um, it lays directly on that face. And that is much easier than trying to rotate and do all of that stuff. So that's why I don't use this rotate button too much, only to orient um, this way if I need something super long. Otherwise, I do the lay on face if I need to rotate it that way. The next one is the cut button here. I rarely use that button, but if you needed, say an object was too big to print or something like that, that's an easy way to, you can cut it in half and then print both objects and then glue it back together or something like that. I rarely use this, if at all. The next one is support painting. And as I mentioned before, um, this is where you can go in and you basically wherever you paint with the left mouse button and it turns green like you see there, that means it's going to force the support on there. And anywhere where you right click and you see where it turns red, that's going to block support. So you can actually go in and on these edges kind of color code you know, where you want support and where you don't want support. And it also has, you know, a fill where you can just do a fill. And on the fill, if you left click, it turns green. If you right click, it turns red. Um, so that's pretty handy if you want to really be specific on where stuff is uh, supported and where it isn't. And where I showed over here before, um, under the support where you want to do manual um, this is where you could do the manual and paint all of that and block and paint where you want it, where you don't want it. So that's pretty handy as well. The next one is seam painting, and I don't really use that one at all. Uh, the next one is text. I've used that one a couple of times where you can kind of input text and I guess add 
add to your print and stuff so that's kind of cool to add to the bottom of it or something or to inlay it on the bottom or or whatever so you can add text to your print kind of wherever you want there that's not the best thing for that but you can do that if you want next is painting i use this a whole lot or the little paint bucket so what this allows you to do is select different filaments or different colors that you can paint the object with and this has a whole bunch of different tool types triangles the fill bucket which is generally what i use and you can see that it kind of highlights where it would fill that color so i could select you know red and then if i wanted to make all of this blue i could select that and do that you know and then just really go in and you know it's kind of like painting with it and you can do a paintbrush but i mainly use this fill thing and go in and fill what i want painted right so if we wanted these to all be gray then we could do that and you you can do that and paint from there i use that a whole bunch um, that's one of the things that i use the most another thing that i use a lot is this assembly view so if you have something with a whole bunch of parts you can kind of uh, do that and explode it out so you'll see that i added that hello to there so that's the second part to it so you see it kind of moves out and then you can select those parts and kind of paint on that part so that would be an easy way to paint all of these letters and then when i bring it back we'll see that it painted all those letters so if you have a whole bunch of parts um, i have a couple of videos on this where you can um, do that some of my earlier videos but if you have a whole bunch of parts that are just like part one two three four and you can't really tell what they are by these objects over here so see how i have a text shape and now this thing and i can change the color of it pretty easily by doing so if you have a whole bunch of parts you can use that assembly view and blow them out and then just select the piece that you want and color it you know put what color that you want with it i think the mandalorian one is one that i did that way and maybe the baby yoda is another one that i did that way as well so i do use that quite a bit as well all right so whenever you have everything ready to go and um, you're ready to print this thing and we have all these multiple colors and we want to print this the next thing that you want to do is go ahead and hit the slice plate there's a slice all again if you have a whole bunch of plates and everything like i showed you before you can do that or you can just slice this particular plate so in this instance we're, we're going to go ahead and hit slice plate and what this will do is figure out all of the different uh you know layers and all it tells you all of the different how many grams it's going to use all the flush material it's going to use all of that stuff and it'll tell you how long it's going to take to print this uh, particular model which is almost 14 hours that it's going to take for this one um <clears throat> so this is a good point to kind of stop and to point some stuff out right so every time it has to switch colors it does what it's called uh, flushing so here it's going to show you all how much uh, flushing volume it's going to use and how many grams it's going to use as it's doing all of these different color changes and what you can see here is that the print itself is 71 grams and it's flushing out 91 grams um, so it's actually flushing more material out in here and through the little poop chute in the back um, you know more of that material is going through there than is actually going into the print um, here so there is a way that we can adjust that so what we'll want to do is whenever we hit slice it goes to pr this preview tab right here so what we'll want to do is go back to our prepare and we want to go to this flushing volumes and you can go in here and select all of this different stuff but i generally use a 0.5 multiplier on there um and that does have an effect on how much is uh, flushed in and out of the uh, model and as you can see it actually went up with whatever i did there so let's go back to flushing volumes and we'll change it to 0.3 and hit auto calculate and hit ok and we'll slice the plate again 
and we'll see that it's all the way down to 76 now. Now you do want to be careful. You don't want to, you know, have a low flush rate or whatever with white, uh, you know, with the light color and another dark color because it'll kind of bleed through or whatever. But you can adjust that and adjust um, these different things there. All right. And then once you're done, you go ahead and hit print plate. And this is where you double check and make sure that the filaments that you want to use are used here and um, you know the printer that you want to use here is being um, used. You can see this is busy with another job and we're going to look at um, what's going on when it's printing. Um, but here you can also select the different things that you want to do as it prints. Do you want it to do the bed leveling, the flow calibration? Do you want it to take time lapse if you have the X1C? And do you want to enable um, the AMS or the automatic material system? Or are you using a spool on the side or on the back? Um, so once you've selected those things, then you'll go ahead and hit send. And that'll go ahead and send this to the printer. I don't really want to print this thing for 14 hours, so we won't we won't do that. But I do have something that's printing right now. This is another good thing about this software: is while it's printing one object, I can work on a completely different object um, while it's doing the print, and it doesn't affect the print as it's going on. So as you can see here, now we're into the device page. And this will show you all of the controls of um, the printer. So let's go through the things that I use on here and the things that I don't use on here. So media will show you the things that are on the uh, SD card that's in the X1C that are taking time lapses and stuff. And this will give you the option to download it, open in the folder where you've downloaded it, play it and you can delete off the SD card. I've inserted an SD card into my X1C and in six months I've never taken it out and I manage everything from this uh, little file right here. Update, uh, I rarely use this because it generally pulls a little pop-up up that lets me do the update in this HMS, I never use that as well. The status I use a whole lot and if you wanna see the camera, then you're just going to want to hit this little play button right here and you'll see that you can see uh, this printing okay um, down here this gives you the um, you know the progress that it's made so you'll see this particular uh, print is 60 percent through um, and it's on layer 13 of 204 and there's an hour and 17 minutes i can pause it and i can stop it as well tells me how much material is being used and the total print time right here. Up here are some of the camera controls and everything and really I just use this gear here and I always make sure that this go live is going. Um, so that way there's another video where I show how you can make this a full screen image as well and you need that button on to do that. Um, otherwise I pretty much leave these buttons alone. Um, this is like the time lapse and stuff, but I rarely ever mess with that. I just turn the time lapse on and off from the screen that I showed before. This shows your nozzle temperature. You can actually click on here and change the nozzle temperature while it's printing. Uh, same with the uh, chamber temperature here and the bed temperature uh, right here. Here's where you change the speed. Um, so you'll see standard silent slows it down, makes it a little bit quieter, but it does, you know, make it print a lot slower. Sport will speed it up, and then ludicrous is the fastest mode. Here is, you know, you can move the uh, print head and the bed around and all of that. I do use this on the front of the device, but I rarely use it from here. But I guess you could do all of that and do your calibration and all of that. I rarely use that um, from here, though. I do do it from the front of the machine, though. Uh, same with the unload and load and all of the stuff with the filaments. I rarely do that um, from the computer. I generally do that from the uh, front of the, of the printer. Um, here you can see I have the two AMSs and I can select um, through it and you'll see that th this one is connected here and that just means that it's printing from this one. If it was printing one of these other colors, 
then we would see a line and it does change to the color of this line so if it was red it would be red this whole line or if it was blue this whole line would be blue there so you can do that and again I don't really ever mess with this stuff from here I do all of that stuff from the printer all right last but not least um, one of the cooler parts of Orca Slicer and kind of what differentiates it from the uh, Bamboo Studio is the calibration and um, that is done up here um, when you're doing calibration and coming out of calibration I always recommend to go to file and this is the only time that I use this button is to go to new project I don't want to save this one so we'll go to there. If you want to do one of these calibrations, you bring that in. That'll do it there. Whenever you're done calibrating, always do new project. And you don't want to save and you want to discard all of the changes there. Um, and I have a couple of videos on calibrating filaments and doing that type of stuff. So it's not really what this video is about. But that kind of sums up everything that I use within Orca Slicer. So if you're getting a new printer, if you're getting a new uh, Bamboo X1C or P1P with the AMSs, this is kind of how to set everything up and, and kind of get you started. Um, so I hope this was helpful to everybody. Be sure to smash that like button and be sure to subscribe if this was helpful. Um, thank you to all my uh, patrons. And I hope everybody has a good week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.